Well, President Biden's commitment to a Iran deal is bizarre enough, but what's inside the deal may well be catastrophically worse. Joining me now to talk about this is Richard Goldberg, former National Security Council director and senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Uh, Richard, good to see you. You know, nobody is writing about this uh, except you. And when I put out some of your numbers yesterday, we had David Friedman on the set here, former ambassador to Israel, as I'm sure you know. Um, I quoted him from your New York Post article, which must be based uh, on something, some inside knowledge you have, that, um, what did you say, a couple of hundred billion dollars in cash will go to Iran up front? And over five years, it could be another $800 billion more, which actually, uh, Richard, is somewhat similar to the airplane full of cash and gold that Obama gave Iran back in whenever that was, 2010. I don't know when that was. It was so awful. So tell us some more about where you came up with these numbers and what else do you know? Because nobody else is writing about it, which is, to me, incredible. Well, Larry, thanks for having me on. And you remember working in the Trump administration, we had a very different policy, obviously, putting maximum pressure on the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. And just think about where the world has come from. We had a president who was for American energy, working with our Saudi allies. We took two million barrels per day off the market from Iran. And gas prices went down, if you recall. And I remember you gave a recommendation to go for it. And you were right, Larry. What we have today right now is a president who's working on build back more terrorism, more missiles, more nuclear weapons for Iran. His Build Back Better plan isn't working out, so now we have a Build Back Better for the Islamic Republic of Iran. We've had economists take a look at the financial incentive package that's on the table as these talks continue. The president in this uh, Mideast trip saying he's committed to moving forward with this deal if the Iranians would just say yes, which means it'll just get sweeter for the Iranians who are still holding out. $275 billion worth of sanctions relief up front in the first year alone, another $800 billion worth of sanctions relief over the next five years. We're talking about a trillion dollars for the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism pursuing nuclear weapons and long-range missiles by 2030. And what do we get in return, Larry, in this deal? Not very much. It's the same terms as the last deal, only Iran gets to keep all of the advances in nuclear weapons capabilities that they've made over the last year and a half under President Biden. You get to put all these advanced centrifuges into storage, have them ready to threaten us at any time. You get to keep sponsoring terrorism, keep testing their missiles. And as we know, that'll just mean a trillion dollars over the next few years for Iran, and they still get nuclear weapons to boot. It makes absolutely no sense. Richard, let me uh, just hone in on a couple details. Um, I assume, therefore, the deal, uh, which still no one talks about, it will end the sanctions, A, and B, will actually provide cash to Iran, both? Yeah, it's a combination of all the frozen assets around the world right now, which are estimated over $100 billion oh. of inaccessible foreign exchange reserves. Right. Then you have the sanctions relief. So all their oil exports now coming back to the market, their petrochemical sales, all their non-energy sales as well, the foreign direct investment. You put that all together at today's prices, you are looking at upwards of $275 billion up front in year one, and then $800 billion over the next five years. Uh, th this is a massive, massive economic rescue package for the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. And remember, the main institutions that will receive the sanctions relief are the chief financiers of a group the president now calls directly a terrorist organization, the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guard Corps. And again, you don't get strict limits. You don't get anything that's actually removed from Iran's nuclear program. They get to keep enriching uranium. They get to keep all these advanced centrifuges. They get to keep extorting us uh, for years to come. In the 1930s, we called this an appeasement policy. I'm from Chicago. We would just call it an extortion racket. Mm. And of course, when you keep paying the racket, it doesn't turn out well. Um, why hasn't this surfaced? I'm, I mean, look, I understand why the Bidens wouldn't want this to surface. But why hasn't anybody dug into this? I mean, there must be, you know, he says he's got a plan on the table and he's not going to give them forever. 
But the point is, he's saying out there in the Middle East right now, this whole trip, I put a plan on the table. Why haven't people uncovered this plan? Why aren't the media uh, breaking this down? I mean, even his own national security people aren't talking about it. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, we are very distracted as a country right now by what's going on uh, between Russia and Ukraine, for, uh, and rightly so. Uh, but I do think that, that at least in the Senate, uh, we started seeing people paying attention. In the House of Representatives, we saw Democrats stepping up and saying, well, this deal is sounding really, really bad. What happened was is then when Russia invaded Ukraine, it became very public back in March that Russia was at the center of brokering this deal mm. that's still on the table. Mm. And Russia stands to gain billions of dollars from the deal itself, selling nuclear power to Iran and also using Iran as a sanctions evasion hub. China also has a 25-year deal that depends on this deal going through and sanctions being lifted. Right, Russia. So th there's a lot here to unpack. I do think that there are members of the House and Senate who are looking at this closely, have said to the administration, this would be dead on arrival if you submitted it as a treaty. Mm. Uh, and so uh, the Biden administration has a choice to make. Do they work through this and stay at the table now in Doha, Qatar, when they come back from this trip and say, please, 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 can we give you this much money mm. uh, to make a deal? even though they'll have major political backlash back at home. Right. Uh, or will they say, hey, it's time for a new policy here. Our policy hasn't worked. Maybe that maximum pressure thing was working out pretty good. All right. Richard Goldberg, we appreciate the research. Um, I'm sure you're right. And that's probably why they don't want to let this thing get out. Anyway, appreciate it very much.